next we cover Dreams are flippin' weird. First, a few fun facts. Even if you don't remember them, you dream for about two hours every single night. And it's not just humans. Research suggests animals likely dream too. The top three most common dreams across numerous surveys include falling, flying, and being chased. In an average life, you will spend a total of six years dreaming. So the big question, why do we dream? Well, the jury is still out. For most of human history, we've attached spiritual significance to dreams. Then Sigmund Freud came at us all hot and bothered with interpretation of dreams in 1899, 101 years before the new millennium. Excuse me, will any of you? Just making sure you're still awake. Though they differ a bit, if I may sum up Freud and Carl Jung's views on dreams, the odd couple believed they serve as messages from the unconscious to the conscious mind. Some combination of desires, warnings, and lessons, which the ego best pay attention to. There are a bunch of more modern theories, but frankly it's clear science isn't anywhere close to an answer. I was going to put you to sleep with some egghead scientific argument behind dreams, all that REM nonsense and sleep cycle mumbo jumbo. I mean, it's all legit, but come on. Even if we can explain dreams technically with neurons and research, what are the implications of the fact that every night for about two hours, your mind creates in real time a dream world extremely similar to the waking world? How do you know you're not dreaming right now? Or what if we're all actually living within Vishnu's dream? Or it's an infinite regress. Reality is all a dream within a dream within a dream going on forever. I think Rock Morin, journalist and curator of the World Dream Atlas, a collection of dreams from around the globe, lays it out nicely. I found that across cultures, dreams often entail a return to mysticism or the divine and allow people to engage in magical thinking without stigma. Of course, this relates back to Joseph Campbell, the mythology professor we covered in my last video. We can easily connect Campbell's hero's journey here, the path between the waking and dream world being an obvious parallel. The act of dreaming is a circular path we traverse every night, so that we can return to the waking world a little wiser. So too is the relationship between the conscious and the unconscious. It's far more complex than I can cover now, but in my opinion the circular path is a solid representation of how the two are entangled. And don't even get me started on lucid dreams. The scientifically verified phenomenon of realizing you're within a dream and then actively controlling said dream. It's bananas, but 100% real. And if you're interested in learning more, leave a comment below and I'll cover them in the future. Quick tangent, I was in a lucid dream once and thought, I want to fly. And then an airplane just appeared on the ground next to me. And it was like, damn subconscious, that's so raven. There's certainly far more to cover on dreams. I just wanted to provide you with an appetizer for future explorations. Thank you. Oh, and like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks again. <laughs>